Hi and welcome. In this video, we are going to see about generate all pairs of zero and one question that was asked in Rebbe's interview marathon in recursion. Okay, so let's understand the question first. The question here is saying Himanshu has n pairs of binary numbers zero and one. He is trying to generate all possible combinations of zero and one of two into n length. Okay, but the condition is for each zero there should be a corresponding one. Okay. For each zero, there should be a corresponding one. For example, if n equals to two, and so we need four length strings of zeros and one, and for each zero, there should be a corresponding one after it. Okay, corresponding one means there should be a corresponding one after it. Okay. So if we write one zero one zero, this is not correct because after zero there is no one, so there is no corresponding one after zero. Fine. If you want to understand it better, uh, instead of zero, just have a opening bracket and instead of one have a closing bracket so the question becomes we need to generate uh, all the pairs of opening bracket and cl closing bracket such that for each and every opening bracket there should be a corresponding closing bracket fine so if you just write this particular line so for each opening bracket there should be a closing bracket so a balanced pair so the 0 1 0 1 is nothing but this and if we write this this is nothing but a closing bracket a opening bracket a closing bracket and opening bracket so this is not a valid pair okay so therefore we need to generate all possible combinations of zeros and ones such that after every zero there should be a corresponding one for it for each and every opening bracket there should be a corresponding closing bracket okay so that we have to generate of 2n length fine uh, we need to print in a list in a sorted order okay fine so in this particular question what we are going to do we are going to see how to generate the logic using the recursion tree fine so the recursion tree will be helpful here okay so if we say for three the answers are nothing but zero 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 one 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 okay this is given in the question also zero 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 one zero one one and so on okay so let's try to generate them let's try to generate them so if we just think of the opening bracket and closing bracket let's say we have an opening bracket open and a closing bracket close variable okay so o variable and a c variable for opening bracket and for closing bracket fine so what we are doing here is we are concatenating zeros that is, that means we are concatenating the opening opening brackets so if we start with an empty string okay we are concatenating zero then from zero we are again concatenating zero and then we are again concatenating zero fine now once we reach at, at a point uh, where we have zeros that is the opening bracket equal to uh, the n that is given to us so when o equal to equal to n now in this particular case we are stopping right here okay and now we are appending our closing bracket so here it will come 0 0 0 1 then for each and every case we need to check so is the number of opening brackets equal uh, equal to 3 yes it is so we do not go to the left side it is empty we go to the right side only so it is 0 0 0 1 1 similarly the number of closing opening brackets is 3 yes so we do not go to the left side we go to the right side 0 0 0 1 1 1 and once the string length equals to 2 into n we stop and print this so we will print 0 0 0 1 1 1 fine once we then we return to the previous step to the previous recursion stack now in this particular case is there any option left we have checked the left case we cannot add zero we have checked the right case we, we have already added one similarly then we return back we have checked the left case we have checked the right case we are returning zero there was no left case we have checked it and we have checked the right case uh, we return to this particular position yes now here we have only checked the left case we have not checked the right case so we will now check the right case okay so in the right case we are appending a one fine now go to the left case so do, is there any option to append a zero yes there is an option why because the number of closing brackets the number of zeros is less than three right now that is the number of n that is given to us so we can append zero zero one zero fine is there an option to go to the left side no there is no option why because the number of closing brackets is now equal we have three so we go to the right so zero zero one zero one so there is no left go to the right zero zero one zero one one fine and we print it because its length is now six that is two into n okay now we go to we return back now once we return to this position we have checked left and right return to this position check left and right return to this position check left now we need to check our right okay so we go to the right side so we append a one now for this also we need to go to the left side again so do we have a left side yes we do because the number of 
zero is less than three, so we can append one more zero into it. Fine. Now we go to the right side and we append a one. We cannot go to the left side. The number of zeros are done. Okay. So so now we append a zero and we append a one. Zero is already appended. We append a one. The length becomes six. We print it. We move back. As simple as that. Now we go here. Now can you append a one here? So if we append a one here. Uh, this becomes imbalanced. So this is something like this. The number of closing brackets is more than the number of opening brackets. Okay, so this is not correct. So we got a case here. We got a case when the the number of C is greater than the number of O. In that case, we do not append. We only append when C is less than the number of O. Okay, so we are only appending on the right side. That is the second step that we are doing only when C is less than O. And we already know that we are going on the left hand side only in the case when O is less than N. Correct. So we got these two conditions that if my number of opening brackets is less than N, then and only then I am appending a zero. I am appending a zero. We have already seen this. Whenever the O is less than N, we are appending a zero. For example, in this case. But whenever the O is not less than N, okay. In that case, we are not going to the left hand side. We are going to the right hand side. In the right hand side, we need to check whether C is less than O or not. That is, the closing bracket is less than opening bracket or not. If the closing bracket, that is nothing but one, is less than opening bracket, then we can append one. But in this case, we cannot. We cannot. So we got these two conditions just by drawing our recursion. Three. Okay, appending one if C is less than O. Okay, and appending zero if O is less than N. Yeah, what is the base condition? We already got the base condition that uh, this when our whatever string length, the output string dot length equal to equal to two into N. So in that particular case, what we are doing, we are simply printing. We are we can simply print. Okay, or what what we can do, we can store it in in Java if you like in array list in C plus plus you can store it in vectors. Okay, and then afterwards you can just sort it because we need in sorted order, and you can print it out. Fine. So we got these conditions. Is there any condition that we need? So we we will simply return from here, return from here, and we go to here. And again the same process start. We have already checked the left side, so we check the right side. We append zero one, and then zero one zero, and so on. We go on. Okay. This is what the question, uh, the structure will look like of the code. Fine. So what we need on our recursion function? Let's write that. So we definitely need our output string, correct? Output string. So if you are using an array list or something like that, so you need that part. That is the data structure that we are going to store our strings in. We need the number of opening brackets. We need the number of closing brackets, and we need the number of n. Fine. Now if my opening, that is the current whatever my output string is, its length equal to equal to 2 into n. In that case, we either we are going to insert it into our data structure, and we are going to return. Fine. If my opening bracket is less than n, in that case, we are going to append zero. And if my closing bracket is less than uh, opening bracket, in that case, we are going to append one. Okay. So this is what the code will look like. Just uh, these six lines and these three if conditions, and the code will be over. Fine. So let's just dry run this code and see how it is happening. So as you guys know, when we are returning from this particular position, so this is in the right hand side. This is nothing but the second if condition that I have written. On the left hand side is the first if condition of appending zeros, and in the right hand side is the second if condition. Fine. So when we are returning, 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 so we will return to this particular position. Correct. So if you guys are confused, how that particular position we are going to return to? Fine. So let's just see the dry run, and also we are going to uh, see uh, using the IDE uh, how this is happening. We are going to visualize it. It it will be helpful to see that also. Fine. So let's just see the dry run process now. So let's see the code now. So in the recurse function, we will be having our string, the open opening bracket, the closing bracket, and the end. If the string dot length equal to equal to one, we will print our string. We are already generating them in sorted order, so there is no need for any data structure. So if opening bracket is less than n, in that particular case, we are going to append in our string o, that is sorry zero. And uh, if the closing bracket is less than the opening bracket, in that case, we are going to append in our string one. Fine. So let's uh, let's see the dry run on these. So first one is our opening bracket, which is zero. The closing bracket, uh, which is nothing but zero right now. The number of closing brackets, uh, the n is we know is three, for example. And str is nothing but empty currently. The first one, 
will not run because uh, the condition will be false the second one condition is true that means the output is less than n 0 is less than n which is nothing but 3 so we call the recursion function and once we call the recursion function so in our str we will get str appended with 0 so str will be 0 the output will uh, the sorry the opening bracket will be increased by 1 so 0 plus 1 will be 1 and the closing bracket will remain 0 first one will not run second one again the opening bracket is less than n so yes it is so we will call our recursion function we call the recur function now in this function opening bracket will become 2 str will become 0 0 and closing bracket will remain a 0 fine obviously the first one will not run so the second one will run because 2 is less than 3 so therefore the second one will run and we will call the recur function okay now in this particular recur function the output uh, sorry the opening bracket will become 3 str will become 0 0 0 closing bracket is still a 0 first one will not run second one now will not run because opening bracket less than uh, n is false 3 is less than 3 is false now the third one will run now we'll call the recur function that is the second recursion function fine opening bracket will remain 3 now the closing bracket will become closing bracket plus 1 so it will become 0 plus 1 which is nothing but 1 str will become 0 0 0 and 1 will be appended into str now so 1 is appended the first one will not run the second one will not run the third one will run because 1 is, is less than 3 is true so output will become 3 sorry opening bracket the closing bracket will become 2 str will be 0 0 0 and 2 again a 1 will be appended so 1 1 uh, after this one more one is appended so 1 is not there 2 will not work 3 will work so recursion function will be called again and now when the recursion function is called so we have here that output is nothing but 3 the closing bracket is nothing but 3 the str becomes 0 0 0 1 1 1 so the first condition becomes true that a string dot length equal to equal to n so the condition becomes true and we print our string and we return so from this particular case we will return printing triple zero triple one fine the third step is over there is no more steps after three so this will also return fine similarly here the third step is over there is no more step after 3 so we will simply return this is how return works and similarly here the third step is over so we will just simply return from this also fine where we are stopping we are stopping at a position here ok so in this one what we have the second one right now we return to now we will go to the third position we will go to the third position we will check is 0 less than 2 yes 0 is less than 2 so this condition is true this is completed now now we go to this and in the str we will append 1 so in 0 0 0 we will append 1 so it will become 0 0 1 the closing bracket will become 1 and the opening bracket will become 2 remain 2 first one will not run second one yes it will run because 2 is less than 3 so therefore the second one is running and in the str we are going to append 0 so now 0 0 1 0 is my str closing bracket is 1 and opening bracket is 3 now will the first second one run no because 3 is less than 3 is false so second one will not run and the third one will run and so on it is going to continue so this was the dry run of this particular recursion or how the how, how it is happening how each and every thing uh, each and every append is happening fine so let's see the code for this uh, so this is the code it is in uh, java i'm going to show one uh, visualization therefore i've used this ide here of java fine so this is uh, exactly the same code uh, instead of n i have a max and nothing else and the rest everything is same fine so let's just see for input 3 what is happening okay inside recursion again so just go to java visualizer and here when we run it so you can see all these values close is 0 current string is empty max is 3 and output is 0 okay then we run here so again recursion will work and as you can see 0 is appended in our current string and output open open is nothing but 1 okay then the condition will be checked one is one is less than three so therefore again there will be an append so here it, this is appending fine so it is zero zero max is three open is incremented to two then here we can see the op um, again zero is appended and open is incremented to three now this condition will not work and we go to the second condition as you can see here we are going to the second condition fine and the generate where it, this one will work and now one will be appended okay so as you can see here now one will be appended fine open essay and close, closing bracket is now incremented to one 
and so on the process will occur so the closing bracket will now be incremented to 2 again 1 is appended then a closing bracket variable is incremented to 3 now the condition is true so we will print so as you can see the value is printed here and we will return so once we return so it will not return here not here not here not here it will return to this particular position so as you can see it returns once again see it is returning so it returns to this particular position fine after it returns to this particular position again the same things are happening so one will be appended and so on it is happening right working okay so this helps in visualizing recursion so therefore i have just shown this part fine similar things you can do in c plus plus also okay thank you Thank <laughs> you.